Hey, what's up, everybody? Need to mute something. What's up, Chris? Uh, Chris, maybe mute your mic. Is your mic muted? There we go. Thanks. Appreciate that. Sorry, I had a little echo there. What's up, everybody? Um, thanks for coming back to another live stream this week. Uh, me here, Tony Campanovo, with uh, Chris back with us. Uh, I think, is this maybe the last day you're going to be double teaming with us? All right. That's correct. Tony. That's correct. Today will be my Today last stream in tandem with, uh, with uh, either you or Nick. Very cool. Sorry, I didn't mute my mic there when you were saying that. <laughs> I did what I asked you not to do. Um, so yeah, uh, welcome back everybody. Um, today, uh, our topic that I chose is uh, I'm just going to be, I guess Chris and I both will, will kind of do a demo here of the PV uh, Vitriol Lead Amp Setting. And the reason uh, I chose this, uh, this is coming, uh, something else I pulled from our Amp of the Week um, Instagram campaign. Uh, this is one that that has been posted already. So uh, this, you can find the Instagram video of it and should be able to get the, download the preset uh, from our custom tone page if you want. I'm going to show you guys what I did with it, let you hear how it sounds. And then uh, I'll probably has some more interesting things that he's done with it. Uh, mine is a little more bare bones, so I don't know if that'll be something that you would want to download, but maybe so. It still sounds pretty good, even though it's it's quite simple. So uh, everybody can hear me okay. <laughs> up Nick Bell in the house so you can tell this is a pretty high gain amp uh, PB vitriol model it's just a pretty high gain amp in general and of course the lead uh, channel is is the highest gain of them all so what I did for the amp of the week series and I'm just gonna jump over here to um, my HX edit show you guys um, the whole thanks Nick. Uh, the whole idea, you know, again with the amp of the week campaign was to demo a different amp with each post and give you an idea of just how the amp sounds. Um, you know, a, a bare bones idea of how that amp sounds without too much uh, salt and pepper all over it. You know, too many effects and stuff. So that's what I did. Um, essentially, I, as you can see here. I took the amp, just the amp by itself, because the one thing I did that's not completely factory, because I do want to give like the best interpretation of like the real amp and give you some different nuances. Um, got the, the head here by itself. And then for the speaker cabinets, I did use two microphones. So um, as you can see, uh, I've got the dual tab selected and then I have the link connected so we're selected we're connected and we're going so that again that, that essentially is like giving you one cabinet with two mics on it so cabinet number one uh, I kept the the stock mic on it when you when you select the PV vitriol lead uh, when you do the amp cab combo uh, in helix it's going to naturally have this uh, FET 47 condenser mic on there. And that is a great sounding mic. Uh, I've used that on a lot of stuff. Uh, probably some other things I've put on some of my Amp of the Week uh, patches as well. So can't really go wrong with that. But to me, the higher gain stuff, um, they always sound really good with a, a good dynamic mic on there. And so uh, I picked the 421 dynamic mic and it's just uh, sitting there at zero degrees. Uh, the condenser mic is also at zero degrees. They're both right up on there. Obviously you can move these around, but uh, just, uh, just again, just going back to how it sounds. <laughs> Probably, 
probably help if I tune my guitar. Sorry. It was in tune when I bought it. I didn't buy this guitar. Sorry about that. So, yeah, we've got a, a really nice um, kind of tandem mic setup here with the 421 dynamic and again with the 47 condense, condenser mic. Sorry, I'm getting emails. Um, so, they just give a great um, broad interpretation of how this amp sounds. And then hopping over to the amp itself, uh, just kind of to show you the settings that I have on the amp. I think I might have left this pretty much on the stock settings because the whole idea behind Amp of the Week, again, is to just kind of show you what these stock amps sound like out of the box. So I don't do a lot of messing around with these. I'm pretty sure I left the stock it's It's pretty ferocious. Lot of good uh, high gain going on there. Um, now, I feel like to to anytime you want to give an amp just a kind of a dry but roomy sound, an amp in the room sound, I love to add this dynamic ambience. Um, and and uh, you guys are probably familiar with this uh, if you've got a pretty new update on your Helix. Um, this just kind of like it says here at the top here, room size, it gives you a room sound. As you can tell when I play, I've got it set uh, on the lowest setting. It doesn't sound like reverb necessarily. I mean, obviously it is, but it's just got like a room sound, like you're in a, a large room with a drive. <laughs> course we can change the size of that room if we want. There's some a lot more uh resonance there. That's a lot. So yeah, I just feel like that kind of sounds like you're listening to an amp demo in just a, a room. <laughs> dressing I put on here uh, I'm not using it right now but I did throw on this horizon drive um, just to, to have something on there it's not on right now but when we turn that bad boy on, you, can, you can tell a little more sustain uh, a little more bite I've got the gate cranked up as you can see I, I like cranking that gate up because it's it's a noise gate. It just cleans up what you're Kind of made for each other, man. The Horizon Drive uh, with that PV Vitriol amp. It's just a great combination. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there uh, at that. What's up, Jake? Jake Stewart. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's kind of my bare bones um, sample there. So, uh, Chris, I'll hand it over to you. Uh, I know that these high-gain amps, like you told me before, they're kind of your wheelhouse. So, uh, 
got anything cool to show us with this? Yeah, man. So, um, so what I did is I kind of expanded on uh, the app itself um, just to see what, what kind of, of sounds you could get out of it. And what I came up with is this preset here. So um, as you can see on my HX edit screen, I did uh, take off some of the gain on the amp. So um, I think on your Tony, you, you were saying that you left it pretty much stock. Um, so it, it comes with a bit more gain if you were just to select the amp. So I, I took it just under um, halfway, so 4.7. And I did play with the EQ a bit, just, just to give you some examples of how it can sound with different things. And I did put two cabinets on the presets so we can hear um, the variety it can provide. So um, the first cabinet that I have is uh, a more vintage one. So it's, it's the newer 412 with uh, Greenback 25s uh, with the 4038 ribbon and a 57 at a 45 degree angle. And I played with the positions a bit because the, four, the, the ribbon mic is, is really bassy and, and then obviously the, the 57 is, is pretty bright and dynamic. And as always, I put pretty aggressive high cuts on the cat blocks to replicate the, the frequency curve of a normal speaker in real life. So, um, and at the moment I have the kinky boost on, but just with a tad, a, a little touch of drive but mostly, it's mostly on for the boost and bright features just to give some life to, to the amp because it's on lower gain settings. So without any other overdrives or effects of any kind except for a little hall reverb here, here's how it sound. So it's got a, a fair amount of bass. It's not exactly tight, even for a modern amp, thanks to the cabinet that I paired it with, since it's a more vintage focused kind of sound. Um, so it shows you that even though the vitriol is, um, what is an amp that was released for a modern metal artist, you can get uh, lower gain sounds and more muddy kind of grungy kind of sounds with it if, if, you, ju if you just tinker with it a bit. Um, and for that amp and cabinet pairing, I usually use the Scream 808 just because it was kind of muddy just now. So just to tighten up the low end. So if I just play again without the 808. Switch it on. So now it's starting to sound like um, the I well the per what what purpose was for the amp initially, so being more high gain and, and, and modern sounding with that 808 in front. So it's, it's way tighter and it, it boosted the mids a bit so it cuts through a little better. And um, for the second pairing, let me just switch it here. I used a more modern sounding cabinet in a way, but just because of, of the mic choices. So I did the 412 Blackback with a seven dynamic at a 45 degree angle and the 67 condenser. And then this one as well as the 45 degree angle. Once again, like my other cabinet box, pretty aggressive high cuts just to balance it out. So here's without, here's some without any overdrives. So it's, it's already brighter sounding than the first cabinet just because of the mic choices and the cab itself. Uh, so we're kind of entering the modern territory without having uh, that super, super tight, higher gain kind of sound. 
and with this one, I went um, a little less modern in my choice of overdrive, and I use the deranged master just to boost every frequency uh, the same way, basically. So I just I don't I didn't want to cut the bass, I didn't want to boost the mids. So it's it's going to be pr pretty much a flat boost, just adding some more drive on top. So let's hear it again without the overdrive. So now instead of really being tight, we kind of kept the um, a bit looser kind of feeling the amp already had, but we just took everything up a notch and really got the amp cooking. So um, it, it's it's a different take basically on just boosting the amp and instead of going the traditional route, w which was just adding a, a TS kind of green overdrive in front of it, just boosted everything else and then made for a semi-modern tone. Uh, I say semi because of the amount of uh, gain present, but the frequencies themselves there aren't too tight, so it's not as modern as uh, as the other kind of configuration that I had. So that's pretty much it for for that um, amp model for today for me. Uh, I really encourage everyone to just try different combinations because as as we could just hear uh, just now, it can range from. Still high gain sounding, but really muddy and kind of 90s grungy kind of sound to super high gain modern tight metal and everything in between, you know. So, so just tinker around and, and you'll find some great things to do with that amp. So back to you, Tony. Yeah, that's really cool, man. And uh, I really think you got a great sound going there with the different overdrive pedals. I did want to ask you. Uh, I don't think you mentioned, but would you mind mentioning just as far as the high cut and low cut? Is there anything specific that you use uh, that you set your high cut and low cut to when you're uh, tinkering with the cabs and the mics? That's actually a That's very, actually very good very question, good. Tony. So what I do with my cab blocks is usually I try to, to um, set the high cut to a value that were that would be close to what the speaker um, the speaker's frequency range would be in real life. So in, in the case of that cap lock I have right here, I set the high cut on the seven dynamic to six point seven kilohertz, and on the sixty seven condenser I set it at six point four. So um, a real a physical speaker will have high cuts everywhere between five and a half to seven thousand kilohertz so um i always set the values within that ballpark just just so i can be as as close to the real thing as possible i uh not all i don't always use low cuts but in the case of that amp uh, which was fairly bassy to begin with i did put some of them but at fairly conservative values uh, under 100 hertz each just to remove a bit of the mud, but don't lose the, the bass and the feel of the amp. So yeah, um, everywhere between five and a half kilohertz to seven kilohertz is usually the ballpark where I set my high cuts. Very cool, man, thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to pick your brain about that because uh, as a lot of people probably know, <clears throat> the, there's, you know, the frequency spectrum for guitar is not necessarily as broad as the one that you can that the helix covers so um a lot of times i think uh, people overlook high cut and low cut um with their with their mics and stuff and uh, i've i've noticed a lot of guys doing when i've demoed stuff before you know as soon as you start rolling off that high cut or or whatever it may be at the time it'll it'll just like progressively start to sound more like something that uh they're more familiar with and I just think that uh, the high and low cut on your cabinets are, are something like a one of those secrets that it's good to be aware of just to, to get the most out of you know whatever 
whatever patch you may be using. Um, again, I think on mine, I just left it pretty much straight, you know, out of the box. Yeah. But uh, something to be aware of. So I just wanted to pick your brain on that. Um, and I would uh, I'll just mention, as far as uh, this amp goes, um, just things I like to do when I'm messing around with anything like this, especially a really high gain amp. Um, oh, and that reminds me too, I saw a question here, let's see, uh, from Desangelium. I don't know if I'm saying that right, man. Sorry if I'm not, but he said, hey guys, what would be the ideal Helix model for modern, very tight metal? And as far as the ideal goes, uh, and Chris, you may want to add something to it, but this vitriol is certainly one of them. I don't know, you know, whatever, everybody's probably got their own opinions on that, but uh, the vitriol is a, is certainly a good one. Uh, and I noticed Jake Stewart mentioned in the comments there, uh, the Line 6 Badonk uh, was another good one for modern tight sounding metal. So, um, yeah, any of those. Uh, Personally, I feel like I always try to get like really high gain sounds from the the amps that you wouldn't necessarily use. Like <laughs> I'll use like a Fender Deluxe Reverb and then just put like a couple of overdrive pedals on it and and get a what I think is high gain, but it's a high gain by different means. I don't know, but uh, yeah, uh, Nick Bell mentioned uh, he digs the Line Six Electric, and that one is is a good one too. I think I. I may have done uh, something. Sure, don't quote me on. That. There's so many. Um, I mean, the the orange or the, or the uh, mandarin <laughs> sounds great. Um, the Cali, obviously Cali rectifier, sounds great. There's just a ton of them. I think the the for me the PV vitriol was. I kind of overlooked that one for the longest time until I did a preset for it for the amp of the week and I realized gosh this thing is this thing screams you know um of course something i always do to kind of amp and this is just show you guys stuff i like to do i'll go ahead and turn this overdrive pedal back on i'm gonna set something up a little more for leads or something uh and it depends on the amp but something i like to do Kind of do the old reverse scoop and boost the mids. And uh, hopefully you can tell, you know, through your computer, the difference. Uh, I feel like it just gives you a nice silky warm tone and a little delay on there that much delay Sounds cool with some delay, or maybe um, change out the uh, reverb on it too and, and try something different there. Let's see if I get rid of this delay. Jump over to my reverbs. Oh, dynamic hall. I mean, I wouldn't use this much reverb with a delay, but just uh, just to hear what that sounds like. And I, again, I've got these mids cranked up. On my amp, I can see I've got it almost to eight there. <laughs>
So just some mindless jam in there, but that's a little more uh, getting into the, the sounds that I would go for more with one of these amps. Um, just FYI for anybody who wants to hear different ways of running this amp, I'm always a sucker for lots of mid-range and uh, I like reverb and delay. The older I get, the less I'll use the two of them together. Uh, I'm still I'm still recovering from all that, but um, yeah, I like I like still like a good bit of reverb or delay. It's just that it seems like when you're playing metal, you don't need quite so much because you just got so much distortion going on already. But uh, still a cool sound regardless, and uh, also Chris, I think the stuff you had going there sounded great as well, my friend. Uh, I knew you would probably deliver some cool tones for this just because uh, all your high gain stuff that I've heard so far always just sounds really good, man. It's just, you, know, you got a really good knack for dialing that stuff in. So, yeah, man, thanks for uh, contributing some, some cool uh, stuff to today's stream, man. Yeah, no problem, Tony. And, and as always, thanks for having me here. And if you don't mind, I, I uh, want to get on, on the question that this Angelium asked. Um, basically, um, the ideal, quote unquote, um, modern, very tight metals kind of sound, you could just base yourself on the preset that Tony had today. Um, invective, higher gain settings, Cali V30 cab with your choice of, of mics and Horizon Drive. And, and just set the attack value to a higher setting so it, it really cuts the bass and, and you'll get in that super, super, super tight kind of sound real fast. So um, if that preset is available um, to download, uh, I would suggest trying that first as, just as a, a baseline and then just tinker with it. But yeah, Invective, Horizon Drive, your choice of, of cabin mics and, and you'll be uh, up to the races, man. So, so yeah, so that's the only thing I wanted to bring out. But uh, yeah, Tony, as always, thanks for having me on these streams. It's always a blast and, and people always have really good questions. And uh, I'll, I'll sure be cheering you on from, uh, for, from, from a distance in the comments for the next ones. Absolutely, man. Thanks, Chris. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, that uh, second opinion there on this preset. Um, I guess you're right. This is a pretty good place to start for just a bare bones tight overdriven sound something I'll, I'll throw in uh just kind of add to what you said is uh you know the horizon drive one thing that makes that so so cool is that it's got the gate built into it and that helps tighten your sound up um but you can also on helix you have the choice to just choose the horizon gate which is just the gate section of the horizon drive so you can use that uh, along with maybe some other pedal if you want and another thing i'll add to that just a little bitty thing if you don't already know and most of you probably do so i don't mean to assume but uh the input gate and i'll just show you that real quick if anybody is not aware of that right here um your your uh, very first block, the circle there where you're where it says multi, uh, you'll notice when I click on it, you get this uh, input right here. You get a whole menu, and right here you see this input gate, and I don't know if you'll be able to hear it over your speakers. Probably not. But as soon as I turn that off, I, I tend to get a little more noise. You can really tell with lots of gain or single coil pickups. That if you'll just turn the input gate on, you don't even have to tweak it necessarily. Just turning it on with its factory settings will clean up your sound a lot. And I, I use the, the input gate on any, any patch that I create uh, regardless. So that's something that'll certainly help with getting a, a, a tight, you know, metal sound or any other kind of sound really just never underestimate the input gate and again back to what chris said never underestimate high and low cut so uh yeah good stuff thanks everybody for joining us thanks nick bell for chiming in today if you're still out there thanks for hanging with us dude uh as always chris thank you it's been great having you uh help out with these and guys 
Uh, be on the lookout because uh, Chris will be doing these uh, by himself uh, soon. So uh, we'll be adding him to our normal rotation. And uh, be great to see the stuff you've got coming up in the future. Um, thanks, everybody. Don't forget, check out uh, our online one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons that we're still doing. Um, basically, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one version of one of these live streams, we can pretty much cover any of the topics you want. You can sign up for that uh, on our website. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, Jake. And thanks, Nick, for hanging out. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Take care.